In this video, I'm building the ultimate USB charging station. All right, so welcome to my very messy charging station. Um, that's this part up here. This is right now camera storage and camera gear storage, and as you can see, it's poorly utilized. So my problem has been that I have been accruing camera gear and digital gear, all of which needs to be charged, and as I've added more and more to it, this little charging station I built up here has gotten messier and messier to the point where I have some gear in a different room, I have some gear on a different part of this room, some stuff I'm not even sure where it is, it's, it's basically out of control. So I wanna rebuild this charging station to be something that is usable. And this time I'm taking it sort of in a two-pronged approach because I need it right now, like I need it today. Like there's a camera I wanted to use for this that I don't know where it went, I think it's over there somewhere. So I wanna redo this thing, and my first thought was to build a whole new unit. Like, get the wood, put it on wheels, maybe CNC some of it, build special custom drawers, all that kind of stuff. But that's a three to six month project given the amount of time I have, and I'd like something in the next week or two, spending 20 or 30 minutes a day fixing this thing up. So my plan right now is to get rid of all of these things, not counting Captain Kirk, of course, who will find a new home somewhere, um, get rid of all these things which are barely used camera storage for stuff that I don't use very often that I've been kind of dumping there, and use this wall for a lot of the items that need to be charged, especially smaller things like this little microphone over here, for example. Um, and then use up here for the more flat objects like the iPads and the iPhones and those sorts of things, and then all of the various camera batteries and light batteries and all that stuff would go in and around here as well. Um, my plan is to not do any big construction, just some cleaning and organizing, and also to bring in a bunch more USB chargers, because one of the things that I have is I'm tying individual USB things onto this plug, and it's, it's just not, it's, it's not efficient. So I'm getting a bunch of, of multiple unit USB chargers. They're 10 each from Anchor. Uh, and I'm gonna bring those in and that will give me enough USB chargers that I can free up possibly the plugs for some of the power tools and other things that need to charge as well. So as I do this, I'm probably not gonna film each individual movement of stuff because that's kind of a mess. But what I'll do is when it's over, assuming that I actually make it work, I'll touch base with you about what I did because this is a relatively quick and potentially relatively inexpensive way to just do a quick refresh of your charging situation uh, and make it a little bit more efficient and a little more usable. So stay tuned, I'll be back, possibly with a different shirt. Well, I have made some progress. Um, as you can see, I've gone to these blue bins to hold everything and um, it's, it's not bad. Wound up making a whole bunch of these wire guides. These are little 3D printed wire guides. Uh, made these 3D printed wire guides and the cables run through them and then around. It turns out that the cable management is going to be a bit of a challenge because it's not flexible in the least. Um, it goes into each of these things nicely. So I have, you know, two lightning adapters and a micro USB adapter here. Uh, down here, which you can kind of see, I have um, two USB-Cs and two micro U mini USBs, or micro USBs. Um, so each of these things is designed for the object that fits in it. And back over there, there's a whole big cluster of cables behind this, um, this shelving unit. Wire management is going to become necessary. I'll talk more about that probably later. But anyway... Um, what I've discovered is if I start taking things out of their bins, especially if I'm doing a big video, I'm taking a ton of stuff out of their bins to set up a video, I don't exactly know where they go back. And because each bin is essentially coded by the nature of the cables, I have to put the right gear back in the bin. So my next thing I'm gonna do is come up with a solution for labeling the bins. And the problem is, is for a single use thing like this, Labeling the bin is really easy. That's what these bins are designed for. But for something that has four or five items in it, especially 
Like this has three completely different items. It has a keyboard, it has a charger, and it has an old camera. Um, it's going to need a big label, and that won't fit in this little tiny spot. So I'm probably going to 3D print some kind of solution. All right, I'll see you in a bit. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've 3D printed all of these things. It's three or four days of, well, three or four days of printing, but really it was about a day's worth of time. I just got around to it over the course of three or four days. And what they are are little plastic things, and I'll show you them in a few minutes in depth, that slide in and give me an extended space. And what I'm going to do next is take some pictures of each of these things and put pictures on each of these things. I also printed a slightly different version that fits in here. Fits in here? Come on. There we go. Fits in there. Um, and another one for a different kind of container down at the bottom. So I, I'm pretty... Uh, I've covered my bases pretty well. All of these things will have a place to hold a label. So I came up with a plan that uses the Kodak Step Instant Printer. What this thing does is print photos on stickers, and they're just about this size. In fact, they are this size. And what I did is I went through and took pictures of everything. And, and the problem that I was looking at was I shared this gear with my wife, and she would not necessarily know, and in fact, I would not necessarily know, the exact model numbers for every individual unit. So trying to take these things out and then putting them back would be a little difficult if you didn't know exactly which model number it was with a text label. But with pictures, it's great because we can just match the object to the picture and put it back in its appropriate bin. And this will work great in the corporate world where you have a whole bunch of people sharing resources and being able to just come back and go, okay, well, this is the same as this picture, therefore it goes in this bin. So that turned out to work out much, much better than I expected. The Kodak step is not terribly expensive, although the individual prints are they're a little costly. They're not too bad, but but they're they're not cheap. They're like 20, 25 cents a print. So factor that in, especially when a bunch of the prints just didn't print evenly and I wound up wasting, I don't know, 10 or 20 prints. I mean, it was only a couple bucks that got wasted, but it was a little annoying. That said, the results are totally a win. All right, so let's talk results. I've been using this now for a few weeks, and um, I have some conclusions. It is way, way better than what I had before, no doubt. Um, I can store a lot more stuff. I can put things back where they belong. I have cables ready for them. The actual usage, were this to be an equipment list cast in concrete, would be perfect. The problem is it's not expandable, and it's not terribly flexible. That's because there are big wire bundles in the back that had to be jammed in place to get them into the, um, into the charging units. And so if I add more stuff, and I have a pile of more stuff to add, there's not necessarily the space to add it. These are more camera batteries for more gear that I have gotten since I put this together, and now I have to find a place for it and run cables for it and so forth. So expandability is its weakness, and flexibility is its weakness. So what I'm going to need to do is, and, and the right thing to do, is put this whole thing on wheels so that I can get behind it and I can run the cables and do cable management. Cable management in this on the front side is pretty good, but cable management inside the back of this is all jammed together because that's that's all I had space for. So that's the big problem. The second big problem is these cables are sized pretty much to go to these different locations and the links to the chargers, but if I decide to rearrange these things or add more stuff, those cables will have to be changed around and moved around, and they're all they run through here, which is relatively flexible, but they're all wildly tie-wrapped throughout all of this to hold it together. And so making changes are going to be hard. So that's, that's my big conclusion. I would say it's a win, but it's not a home run. And there needs to be a home run. So what are the lessons learned? Well, the lessons learned are, first, the bin system rocks. I really, really like the bins. I really like being able to include all the related parts, like this thing comes with a bag. I'm going to hang it there. Hopefully it'll stay there. It comes with a bag of filters and goodies 
that go with it. And it comes with instructions and all of these are in the bin together. So keeping the bin with its associated accessories, total win. The ability to have these things hanging off the pegboard or basically flexible in some way, another total win, although I'm running out of pegboard space. So the interesting question becomes, what do I do with that? I've integrated behind me, I've integrated power tool charging. Let me sort of scoot down and show you. I've got some power tools in here, like I've got my Ryobi batteries and a number of other batteries, which are harder to remove. So I'm not gonna do it right this second. Um, my rigid batteries and so forth. I've got these sort of integrated here, but they're not great. These um, power strips work very well, and I'll probably reintegrate power strips throughout if I continue to build this out. Um, they're nicely flexible in terms of what I can plug in and how I can use them. So that works. But really, it boils down to it's not on wheels, which it really needs to be to get to the back to really handle the wiring. And it's not as expandable as I would like it to be. It's not as flexible to add new gear and move things around. If I do, I have to make major changes. And it's not a, okay, I bought some stuff today and I'll integrate it this afternoon. It's more of, I bought some stuff today. Hmm, let me allocate two hours this week sometime to integrate it in, which is not what I want. I want to be able to make sure that as I bring things in that day, the next day, I can spend 15, 20 minutes and integrate it into the charging system. But overall, I'm quite pleased with it. I just think it can be better. And in the future, I may make one that's better. But for now, huge improvement. Absolutely a huge improvement. All right, so there you go. My not quite ultimate USB charging station. Although I have to say it's come a long way and it's much better than what I started with. There is also room for improvement. So stay tuned. I'm sure I'll be taking another run at this in the future. My name is David Gowertz for ZDNet's DIY IT. Go out there and power something awesome.